Ever since I started this channel, I have been talking about the Gothic from a very psychological point of view. And I've been doing that to help you discover more about yourself, more about your identity, which naturally has led me to talk about the shadow self, which is a concept that I wasn't really aware of until the end of last year when Tracy Fahey, um, my friend and writer and academic and everything, uh, she told me about this concept in our accountability group. So she made me aware of this and then I realized over the time that it's something I really need to tell you about and I need to keep going and, and need to keep investigating. So what I want to do today in this video is target or uh, concentrate on four aspects. The first is to tell you what the shadow self is. We're going to be answering this question, but then I'm going to tell you how it can actually help you. How can we actually access the shadow self? And how is it connected to the Gothic? Super important. To do that, I'm going to be kind of reviewing or highlighting the main aspects of this book to answer all these questions. I read it in Spanish, Encuentro con la Sombra, but for you have it also on the screen, you have the uh, English version, which is Meeting the Shadow. So by looking at this hidden power of the dark side of human nature, we're going to find many connections with the Gothic. So today, friend, if you're ready, if you really want to go deep down into what your brain does every day while you're reading or how to interpret these struggles through Gothic literature, today this video is for you because I'm going to be talking to you about the shadow self and its connection with the Gothic through this analysis of the main concepts based on the book of Meeting the Shadow, the hidden power of the dark side of human nature. So. My friend, get pen and paper, get comfy, because we're going into our brains. Hello Gothic friend, welcome back to episode 16 of these Gothic break rooms from You Are Gothic But You Don't Know It in Alice in Gothic Land. I'm Alice and I'm going to be talking to you today about the shadow self and the connection with the Gothic. But before we start going in depth, remember that I have a magazine called with the same name You Are Gothic But You Don't Know It where I actually develop more the concepts and the videos and uh, what we do in the videos. So for example, today, in uh, this video today, you can also find the full review of this book, Meeting the Shadow, in my magazine. So if you want to know more about this content, the only thing you have to do is go to gothicalis.com to offers, and then you will see uh, there's a checkout page with all the information that you need to know about the magazine. Every month from the 21st of the, the each month to the 21st of the next month, I think about content that's got to do with the time of the year we're living, but also with all the worries we have in our everyday lives connected to the process of creation of articles, books, but also our critical thinking and our gothic minds to help us live a, a happier life uh, while we discover more who we are. And today I want to tell you about all this, about all of the shadow self. I want to tell you about the shadow self, everything about the shadow self. But there's so much about it that I can only be addressing a few aspects, just as a matter of introduction and also bearing in mind that I am not a psychologist. I'm only a passionate person, investigator who makes a lot of links between a lot of different arts and about all different learnings. I want to start telling you about how it all came into play. Why did I think or when did I start feeling this necessity about the shadow self? How did I discover this? The first person that actually mentioned that I should be talking more or that probably I would end up talking about the psychological side of things was my sister. 
that you can actually if you want to go to my my other video uh, where we talk about supernatural you will see it there i mean the video is in spanish but if you want to see what she looks like if you want to see any family resemblance there then you can go and check it out and then if you know some spanish it might actually you might find that entertaining and useful if you are a supernatural fan they we actually did two parts part one and part two uh, the next person that I've mentioned right in the intro was Tracy Fahey uh, and she told me this in our in, in one of our accountability um, meetings with uh, Justin Park and the three of us we meet once a month and we help each other with our writing projects and it's a very it's a great excuse to meet up as well to to have a chat and see how things are going and Tracy she actually been an academic she did say well all your content Alicia is going towards the shadow self it's a it's a beautiful uh, path if you want to follow it there are many links with the gothic i mean tracy herself she does talk about christopher she talks about freud she's inspired about all these uh, philosophers and psychologists to actually create her own work so if you haven't read anything about tracy you can go now and find it because it's beautiful. I mean, I've been talking about Tracy before, but I will dedicate some more time to her. And the next person that I want to thank for this path, for, for giving me the last push, is Felix Gomez, who is actually a psychologist. And if you've seen my other videos, uh, like with Tracy, I in, in interviewed Tracy uh, a couple of years ago, a year ago, it's almost two years now. And you can see also her interview here. I forgot to mention that. And with Felix, the same. I interviewed Felix. Um, he interviewed me at the beginning of the year, and then I interviewed him as well for the channel. So you have a lot of content here if you want to also go and check that. And Felix also told me a lot about the Jungian, um, this Jungian approach of the shadow self. And he also told me about metaphors, archetypes, and everything started to make sense. So after doing a lot of research recently, this statement came clear to my head. So for me, it's like if the Gothic can help us talk and explore the concept of identity, then the shadow self is another character of our own story. This is something that probably is not new, it's probably something someone has written about it already before somewhere else, but this is really true for me and this is where the real connection is but we're going to start breaking this down into these five uh, four elements so starting with this first element the first question what is the shadow for carl jung the shadow was this other connected to the self as we can learn from this book and all the quotes that i'm going to be making uh, and taking from uh, from this book be aware that the translation, I mean, I read this in Spanish, which actually, I think the originals were in German and then they were translated into English and then from English to Spanish. So bear in mind that I'm translating from the Spanish back to English, which doesn't mean that when you read the, um, the English original, the quotes that appear on my video are exactly like in the original because they are translation, like a reverse translation from Spanish to English, because I don't have both books. Um, so based on a quote from the book i'm not going to be quoting all the time the people saying who who said what but i'm going to be referring to some of the writers uh, the shadow we learn from the book it's made up of all sorts of potential capacities that we don't manifest and that we haven't de developed or expressed we also learn that it constitutes a part of our unconscious that complements the ego and that represents those characteristics that our conscious personality doesn't wish to acknowledge and as a consequence rejects, forgets and expatriates to the profundity of its psychism only to face it again later in the unpleasant fight with others. So basically is a part or that we repress when we are encountered with moments that we don't really like, that we pass off ourselves that we don't really like, we repress them, we suppress them, and then they stay buried them there in, in this dark corner of our brains. But then sometimes there are triggers there that bring these aspects out. And then is when we have this confrontation with other people. We're gonna see more about that in a moment. It's not something that we have to get rid of, it's something that we have to introduce and it's something that we have to learn to live with and to analyze, which is something that you're going to be, we're going to be talking about briefly in a moment and, and how the Gothic comes into that. 
Let's move now to how can it actually help you. Jung talked about the importance to learn to develop our individual awareness, if you realize this is something I always talk to you about, in order not to become neurotic or falling in the hands of addictions. This could be the result of the effect of the collective shadow, which we can find in things such as the way society deals with our basic needs and puts an impossible price to them, certain behaviors towards our jobs, how much we consume, and social obsessions regarding our physical appearance. I mean, this is a quote that someone else in the book uh, talks about and points that uh, points this quote to at to us. So, in this sense, uh, D. Patrick Miller, in part one of the book, he tells us the following, or he writes that John A. Sanford talks about our mental rigidity by saying the following. The more rigid your psychological frame, the more things will look sinister to you. And it is in the ego, sorry, it is the ego, the one that determines what is okay and what is not from the point of view of its own interest. I mean, it's very important because this is uh, in the magazine, I actually have uh, uh, one of the articles is precisely cognitive fle flexibility and resilience. And I talk there about this rigidity of our brains and how actually being rigidly rigid in our minds uh, is counterproductive and it doesn't help us move on move forwards and we actually go to the dark spaces where through this rigidity we encounter a lot of our own monsters so just keep that bear that in mind now so basically being aware of this rigidity we can learn to see uh, where we need to do some shadow work the next question I want to target the next uh, concept is how we can actually access our shadow self. And here we have five points. So Jungian analyst William A. Miller's classification of this exercise is the following. On the first part, on the first, uh, the first thing we can do is to ask for other people's feedback. I mean, this is sometimes very scary, but it's actually an exercise that uh, I've been recommended when I've been doing some training for myself to work on the online world. Uh, it's a fantastic exercise to see actually what other people think about you but also if that uh, concept is that perception matches your own perception because that, there's a lot of information there the next thing that Miller tells us is uh, that we have to unveil the concept of our own projections which is actually connected to the first point so if we realize how we project to others then we're going to realize much about ourselves there's a lot of information there in the third the third aspect we are we learn from or we learn about is to examine our lapsus lingue it, it talks about uh, linguistic lapsus which is the same lapsus lingue uh, which is when we say something we don't want to say and when we're talking it's oh no i didn't mean that well there's information there your subconscious mind is talking to you and it's coming out through your mouth so, but also the conduct, and we have to investigate that. We don't just have to go, oh, forget that, you know, I didn't mean that. Actually, go and analyze why you said that and what is in your mind at that moment. That awareness, that self-awareness is what's actually helping you to work on your shadow. So when, when the others, as I said before, the others perceive us differently to how we perceive ourselves, we need to see why that is. The first point is to investigate our sense of humor and identifications what do you identify with again if you're thinking about the gothic and gothic terms okay there's a lot of information there and the fifth point is to analyze our dreams and reveries and fantasies all these things that are not in our conscious uh, moment in our conscious minds mainly when we dream there's a lot of hidden information there but to get there there are a lot of different exercises i'm only going to concentrate on the literary aspects of the shadow self and the gothic and i'm gonna i'm gonna only go into the gothic but you could do this exercise with other literary genres as well which is going to be very very specific in this channel and we get now to our aspect our the, the part that we are waiting for how is the shadow self how is all these this book what it tells us what we learn from this book how is all this connected to or with the gothic so we see we read here that the role of literature and art is precisely to show the dark aspects of human nature 
And there's a quote by Nietzsche say, that says, art prevents us from dying of reality, which I think is actually very beautiful. And you have to agree with me that uh, we don't have to necessarily go to the Gothic, but in literature, we're going to find a lot of these, uh, these help. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of dark elements, but where there's a dark element, there's a Gothic. It doesn't mean that a book is going to be Gothic every time there's a dark element. It's a, this is a different question, a different uh, concept, a different, a different video if you want. But what it is true is that in those dark elements, which is what we do here, we don't just look at the Gothic pure and just Gothic, but also the, the elements and how Gothic now is treating nowadays more as a mode than just a genre. So this phrase from Nietzsche is really connected to the concept of the projection phenomena, which is something I've already mentioned a few minutes ago. What is projection? In, in very simple ways, remember I'm not a psychologist, but this is what our book tells us here. The, the what do I want to in Spanish? The shadow, the shadow self in omitting the shadow in the English version, is that when we project, what is it that we do? Is when we we admire or reject some elements towards someone else's qualities. And this is disproportioned, okay? So it's when our admiration or rejection towards someone else's qualities is disproportionate. So for, for um, Robert Bly, who is an essayist, a translator, and a poet, he tells us that this projection that was looked at or seen as something negative up to re very recently, it's actually not so bad because there's sometimes this is necessary there's projection because we encounter other people. If there were no other people, we wouldn't be projecting. It's kind of actually part of interacting with others and every day's connection with others. So if we were isolated completely, we wouldn't be projecting. Therefore, that when we get to psychological issues, because we need company as a social beings that we are, we need this interaction. We need moments of contact and we need moments of isolation. So he says that this um, projection is sometimes necessary. The idea he supports um, is, it comes from a quote by Mary Louise von Franks that says, if we cannot project, we cannot connect with the world either, which is just what I've just explained to you. And this actually takes us to the next point, which is to account for the enormous popularity of horror novels and films since that's how the vicarious representation of the shadow allows us reactivate and maybe free our more perverse impulses in the safe surroundings, surroundings that a book or a cinema theatre offers. So what we see here is that this projection is actually translated into the means of this, trans of this projection is the book is the way we have to finally exercise all those demons and to have this other way of living our traumas without actually leaving those traumas. We are in a safe space. We don't physically go there. We can go mentally into those spaces, empathize with the characters that are suffering or even with the monsters, which then you might have a problem. But if you're empathizing, then you are working on your shadows. You're actually helping yourself. That's how literature can help you. And gothic, gothic horror, um, slasher maybe as well, to a certain extent, they can all help you figure out uh, all your dark sides and even to um, unveil aspects that you were not aware of in your conscious mode. But one of the problems that we have as a society nowadays is that we're trying to avoid uh, certain confrontations and certain things. Um, to We avoid giving these traumatizing elements to our children. And that's actually counterproductive because as we can read in the book, as we can read in the book, in Meeting the Shadow, Children are introduced to the shadow by seeing non-real. This has always been like that. So examples, uh, sorry, by seeing non-real examples of the eternal fight of good and evil as universal guidelines of human destiny, which again, having duality here doesn't mean that is the right thing because we also need to learn about the grace, but we need to learn about good and evil too. We can't just um, 
you know, we can just eliminate those. So this we learn, we also, in the book, we learn this, that we'll also explain the recent obsessions for rewriting tales, you know, beware of this, this is very important. There's an obsession for rewriting tales, for rewriting tales, sorry, to make them less aggressive, when in reality, these modifications will not save our children from the reality of the cruelty that there is in the world and that they have to face day after day. And I do agree so much about that. I've been talking about how or why should we expose children to horror, uh, not to scare them, but to actually introduce aspects through a metaphor of the mon the metaphor of the monster of aspects that they're going to encounter in real life we can avoid evilness from people we can avoid uncomfortable situations we can't avoid death we need to live with these aspects we need to be able to have tools to deal psychologically with all these things that make us uncomfortable and we do that since we are children then later on it's not going to be so traumatic we will have the tools and these we see this all the time and in this society mainly where we're living now it, we're just trying to avoid a pain and we're just creating little monsters literally so i've talked about this as well uh, there's another video when i interviewed um i interviewed lex h jones if you remember this book the old one and the sea we precisely talked about that when uh, bringing horror, science fiction, the gothic to children. And there actually, this actually interview with him and with Liam Pace Hill, who is the guy who illustrated the book. And he's been, uh, he was publishing The Sinister Horror for Kids, a Sinister Horror Company. You know, I have to promote my friends. And it's a lovely book. Uh, it's been used in schools for, for kids to learn the second language, English as a second language through the gothic and it's it's a beautiful book but i talk about this in another video so go and check that out as well so this confirms that this theory is not just something that i felt through all the time and then mainly since i've been more uh, talking about the gothic to other people apart from when i was researching a long time ago and what we see in this book okay Another beautiful quote by Robert Bly in, in the Sh Meeting the Shadow is that he talks about language and you know being an English philologist I always have to talk about language it's so important because the language carries information it kind it, it brings um sorry it carries a lot of meaning and sometimes the same vocabulary doesn't carry the same meaning uh, to one person, for, yeah, for one person it might be different than um, for another person, and that can actually cause uh, misinterpretations. It can cause trouble. It can cause, um, yeah, uncomfort if you want. So Robert Bly talks about language as some kind of web by which we can trap all the projections of ourselves we have been scattering all over the place. And then he says, as illustrated by Isaac. Bashevis singer and Shakespeare language contains a substance of the shadow of all of our ancestors I mean this is just a beautiful such a beautiful quote that yeah you know you'll have to create a t-shirt and put that quote in it is that beautiful so there's a lot to grasp here there's a lot to um, digest I have not been able to do a full review you will find the full review in my magazine uh, and even then i've left things behind because this this is one of those books that you have to go back um, regularly to keep checking because it's it's got a lot of uh, interesting information it's full of researches you will see that some concepts uh, repeat throughout the book because there are different writers talking about the same concept from a different angle uh, you can see that I've been working a lot and I'll be working in the future because, as I said, it's like a, it's like a mini dictionary for me this right now. It's a starting point uh, where I can actually go back to and make a lot of other notes and keep investigating. So, would you like to know more? Yes, I'm sure you do. If that's the case, the invitation is open. You just have to go to gothicalice.com and go to offers to the checkout page to learn more about, to, uh, to have access to my magazine, my monthly magazine that uh, I launch from the, uh, the 21st of every month. And as you can see now on the screen, you have this article, this review of this book fully developed, fully elaborated. So you have there, I think it's 11 pages of investigation. As you can see, I talk about niche 
uh, I talk about Freud, I will talk about Carl Jung and uh, all the aspects even if you see that there's a there's a tarot card because we talk it talks about the the evil and the devil and the figure and how we interpret this in our everyday lives so that's it if you want to go to the magazine but before you actually now we're finishing with this before you go the question the question of the video question of the week is what are your thoughts on the shadow self have you actually read the book? And if you haven't, uh, with the information that I've given you here, what is it that the shadow means to you? Why do you think you like the Gothic? And I'd love to know what your opinion is. I know there are many questions, just answer whatever you feel more comfortable with. I'd love to know what you think. You can actually leave me a, a message. If you're watching this in YouTube, you can write your, your comment there. Or if you prefer you listen to me in the podcast, you can send me an email to alicegothicland uh, at gmail.com and I will be super glad to know your opinion. I would like to know what you think about the shadow, if it's something that is new for you or if you've heard about it or if you're an expert and maybe I've missed something out that you will think I should have talked about or that we can address in our next video, another video. So in any case, I really appreciate that you're here. Uh, by the way, I'm activating my new coffee page, even though it doesn't say now on the next page. Uh, I'm activating my coffee page with some new concepts, new work there. So if you want to, you like this video and you want to give me a tip, I'd be very glad that you do so because that's a way to know that people are watching and that you care. So if you like the video anyway, uh, you can at least, if you cannot tip me, at least buy me a coffee, uh, a tea or um, a bag of crisps, I don't care, whatever you prefer. <laughs> you can, I would appreciate if you like the video, if it resonated with you, if you think that you've learned something, if you think that someone can benefit from it, please also share it. Uh, click on the subscribe button and you can follow me in all the other places. So subscribe, follow, like, and recommend, you name me everything. Anyway, friends, thank you for being here today. I hope you have liked the video and until next week, be very gothic and keep looking for your shadow self because there's not more, just one, there's more than one. Okay, see you very soon. Take care, bye.